first Sunday, we talked about, we studied from the life of that man that had palsy, that when you pray and fast and you don't take action, you don't make moves, nothing will happen. Your prayer and fasting will be wasted. That when you pray and fast, you make moves. You make moves. You take steps. And when we talk about taking steps, I said number one, the steps you must take is that you must be a relationship conscious person. Uh, God don't put people in people's lives. He puts people on people's paths. So that by virtue of you knowing how to relate, you can have access to what God has sent them to do in your life. We also talked about the life of that man. You know, we saw first Sunday, we were talking about uh, when they took him to the church where Jesus, the miracle worker was, the, the church was filled to capacity. And the people sat down. They thought of what to do. They didn't turn back. They removed the roof where Jesus was. And I said, the next thing you must do after prayer and fasting is that you must be a strategic thinker and planner. You must be a strategic thinker and think in strategies. Then we talked about the third one, you must put your plans to work. Then second Sunday, that was last week's Sunday, uh, we went further to look about do not allow your habits to be the reason your prayer and fasting will, be, will not be effective. That your habits should not be allowed. And where did we see? We studied Exodus 32, 19, that Moses was so full of anger, he was coming down from the mountain, he had fasted and prayed, received the tablets from God, where God wrote the laws. And because he saw the, what the people did, he was angry. He broke what he fasted for. And I talked about you walking on your character as a child of God. At the second service, we said after you must have fasted and prayed, you should also develop a very sensitive nature. Listen, the day fever will come. Fever won't tell you I'm coming. If you are not sensitive, you can miss the opportunity. Hallelujah. And we studied the life of Absalom, uh, sorry, Amnon. Uh, Amnon, the son of David, and uh, uh, we saw some principles. You can't go back. It's all those messages are on Facebook. Hallelujah. Then, today, what are we going to be looking at today? Let's go to Second Chronicles chapter 20, 1 to 4. We establish from 1 to 4 that Jehoshaphat and the people waited upon the Lord when there was a condition in front of them. Show us Second Chronicles chapter 20 from verse 1. Sometime later, the Moabites and the Ammonites, accompanied by the Menuhites, joined forces to make war on Jehoshaphat. Three nations, three problems, ganging up together to face one man. Jehoshaphat received the, this intelligence report. I love MS, MSG. Intelligence report. A huge force is on its way for, from beyond the Dead Sea to fight you. There is no time to waste. They are already at Hazazan, Tamar, the oasis of Engadi, now, verse 3, we stop at 4. Shaking, Jehoshaphat did what? He prayed. He went to God for help and ordered a nationwide word fast. Can you see that they also fasted and prayed? The country of Judah united in seeking God's help. They came from all the cities of Judah to pray. Then jump to verse 21 and 22, King James Version. Now, after they had fasted and prayed. Now, we fasted and prayed in September. After prayer and fasting, what do you do next? After talking, talk, talking it over with the people, Jehoshaphat appointed a choir for God, dressed in holy robes. They were to march ahead of the troops, singing, give thanks to God, his love never quiet, quits. Sorry, His love never quits. Now verse 21, and after t talking it over, we have taken this, we have taken this, verse 21. Okay, 22. As soon as they started shouting and praising God, can you see? God set an ambush, set ambush against the men of uh, 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 Amnon, Moab, Mount Seir, and they were attacking Judah. Sorry, as they were attacking Judah, and they all ended up dead. Now, can you see that after prayer and fasting, you should develop the attitude of what? Praise. Now, after you must have fasted and prayed, what should you put on? Put up the attitude of praise. Put up the attitude of praise. I wrote here, they put the attitude of praise on. Now, when we talk about praise, what is praise? Praise is commendation. What is uh, praise? Praise is what? For you to commend. It's different from thanksgiving. I will explain as I go on. Praise is to commend. Ah, ah brother, 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 Kuri, they, ah, you are good with the with that thing, the way you beat that thing, you are very good at it. 
ah, not like the other guy you invited to come and replace you. In fact, we didn't know whether we should just be running or dancing. You know, we didn't even understand the sound of the, the thing he was beating. Ah, I don't even know whether where you saw that guy. You know, praise is to commend. To commend. Now, I'm going to tell you some things this morning that will open your mind. Listen, every battle, hear me, praise leads always ends in victory. Every battle praise leads always end in victory. Every battle praise leads always end in victory. Now, I want to be true with the writing so that the reading so that I can preach. It is important we become praise vessels in order to create the atmosphere for the miraculous. Hear me. I wrote down again. Learn to be, pra to be praiseful to God. Both for the things you understand and the things you do not understand. Because praise is different from thanksgiving. Now let me explain. Now when you say thanksgiving, thanksgiving is the show of appreciation. What is thanksgiving? Show of appreciation. Now, and you can, for instance, I wake up in the morning. There was a day I woke up in the morning, and the megad in the house said, Oh, God, thank you, sir. I said, What do I do? We speak pigeon with him. It's an Ausa guy. What do I do now? He looked at me, was laughing. I said, What do I do? You know, because I didn't remember doing anything for him. You are not, a, you are not supposed to involve in Thanksgiving if you have not enjoyed the benefit. Hello? So, Thanksgiving is a show of appreciation. He now said, ah, oh, guy, you don't forget. Uh, you give me food yesterday. Now I said, oh, I don't forget that one. Now, it is different from praise. Praise is not a show of appreciation. Praise is the understanding of the might of God. Now, when you speak about the might of something, you have an understanding. So, praiseful people are different from thankful people. Thankful people have enjoyed something. Praiseful people have discovered something. I come again. Thankful people have, on, have enjoyed something. I want to want to do something. But I want to The people that praise God, one shower, they discovered something. Now, and you can't praise God. You can't be a praise vessel without understanding. Hello, am I communicating? That's why I always say it, praise is higher than thanks. The man who is praising God is not praising God because he has enjoyed anything. He's praising God because of his understanding about God. He understands something about God. Even if he has not enjoyed, he understands this, that you don't know this God I'm talking about. You don't know, you know, he's talking, his understanding is different. The man who is thanking, so let me say, thanksgiving is nursery level. Praise level is university level. So it is babies that understand. Thanksgiving flows with babies. If you want to be children, a, 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 the friend of children, give them biscuits and sweets. They will love you. So, thankful people are, are, are babies in faith. That's why you hear them sing songs like, Phone re re don me wo. That means, Lord, why not test me with good things and see if I will not thank you? That's why they are children. Boya mi o ni shokwe. Some people say, Fa America don me wo. Must he do something before you thank him? You don't understand. But men of praise are those, I don't know whether it has happened to you before, it has happened to me several times. You are reading the Bible to a point, you just stand up, you begin to clap for God. You have not enjoyed that thing you are reading about. Oh. But ah, ah, you say, Lord, you know, you are reading, I remember there was a time I was reading how Israel was coming out of, the, of, of, of Egypt. And all of a sudden, they got in front of the, the Red Sea. Now, when I read the Bible, I don't read it as if I know the end. If I read it as if I know the end, it will interest me. So I now started reading and I put myself in their shoe. Wow, we're singing and dancing. Ah, we are coming out. We have been in bondage for several years. We're even born in this bondage. Oh, we are out. We are... And all of a sudden, they got to the front of the Red Sea, expecting their leader to tell them what is next. And while their leader too was looking, they were not bothered until they heard a shout from behind. Eh? These are the Egyptians coming. 
You know, and you, you, you should just imagine how they will shout. They lost their last born last night. The Bible says every their firstborn, I mean, every house lost a firstborn. Every house. So the kind of anger they will be coming with, yeah, these are the people, who, the, these are the reasons why they lost their firstborn. So they will be charging, and instantly the Israelites were afraid. But they didn't know their master planner had done the work that Julius Beggar could not do. He had made a road already in the, in the Red Sea. Already in the Red Sea. And while everybody was crying, Ah, oh, Moses, Moses, ah, oh, Moses, Moses. Even Moses was confused. That's why God had to ask him, Moses, what are you doing here? Why are you stopping? If I'm Moses, I say, God, I, but you saw this, I, I know, sir, you can see, but you can see, sir. <laughs> Hello? All of a sudden, God said, stretch forth your rod. Moses tried for even obeying. So to do what? But as he stretched for the road, the sea parted ways. You know, the first time I read that scripture, I stood up and I was just clapping for the Lord. Ah, uh-uh, ah, you are the God that can never be stranded, the God that knows what he's doing and has done. Or do you want to talk about when he told the, Is- the Israelites, go around the city of Jericho seven times for seven days? He said, on the seventh day, you will go seven times. The question should be, sir, the people we are going around their city, do you think they will sleep? They will just be at the, at the, on, the, on the fence and start to fire. But God had a plan. What do you think will come out of the mouth of the people the moment they gave the last shout? And the city, not knowing that while they were moving around, God was busy digging. digging. He dug the hole that sank a whole city. Say, God, you are great. That's why the song of thanksgiving is a song of praise. Many songs that we sing in church are songs of thanksgiving. Songs like, songs of praise. How excellent is your name, O God. How excellent is your name, O God. How excellent is your name. Praise. That's why, see, the devil is doing everything. Listen. To take praise out of the church. At the second service, I will show you four, four uh, uh, strategy of the devil to take praise out of the life of the Christian. So, so many Christians are not praising God again. In fact, some have replaced the song of praise with the song of thanksgiving and the song of positive confession. So, learn to be praiseful to God, both for the things you understand or do not understand. Praise is different from that. Like I said, thanksgiving is the show of appreciation. Praise is commendation for who you have discovered he is. So you can't praise God until you discover something about him. That's why when people ask me, Pastor Prince Will, who is God? I always say God is an impossibility specialist. That's who I have discovered he is. Let's move on. Let's move on. So praise is commendation of who you have discovered he is. It does not matter whether he did anything for you or not. Does not matter whether he did anything for you or not. It's just like you are told to write, you know, about God. What will you write? You write your discovery. What will I tell my younger generation? If they ask me, Pastor, Pastor, or my children ask me, Daddy, Daddy, who is God? I can explain God to my children. Do you know why? I have discovered several things about him. But the reason why so many people are not praiseful today is that our discovery of God is low. What some of us know is our pastor. We don't know God. What so many Christians today know is our church. They don't know God. That's why I will teach you how to praise as we go on. Let's go on. Thankful people have enjoyed something. Praiseful people have discovered something. Thankful people enjoyed something. Praiseful people have discovered something. Excuse me, look up. Why do you think Paul and Silas had to sing in that their condition? If not that they discovered something. Where were they? They were in the prison. The Bible said they were bound, hands and feet. 
If it is today's generation, it won't be song of praise. It will be song of war. Or song of deliverance. You will be shouting one song of deliverance. Oh God, deliver Dane. Oh God, deliver Dane. Oh God, deliver Dane. Oh God, deliver me. Oh yeah. Oh God, deliver the Silas. Oh God, deliver. Ah, Paul. Oh God, deliver Dane. Oh God, deliver me. But if you read that scripture, the Bible says they were singing hymns and psalms. Do you know? Look up. Look up. Do you know that even in churches of today, the songs that are very interesting, very melodious, are not praiseful songs. At times when our choir is singing, they are leading praise. And they just pick up this song. My head carry me, they go. My head carry me, they go. Anywhere better they carry me, they go. Anywhere better they carry me, they go. Now, I used to ask myself, when they are leading praises, is this praise? My God, carry me. If God wants to carry you, we die now. I don't used to join you to sing it when you are saying, my God, carry, don't God, don't carry me now. Because better day for heaven. <laughs> Sir, could you need to call Kohonshe praise and worship? It's not praise. It's not worship. The song does not magnify God. Praise is anything that magnifies the Lord. Say here. Have I offended you? Let's look at seven things you stand to enjoy when your praise life is in order. Seven things you stand to enjoy when your praise life is in order. Genesis chapter 49 verse 8. Let's start from there. Seven things you stand to enjoy when your praise life is in order. Now, and when we are talking about your praise life being in order, I'm not talking about congregational praise, praise in church. I'm talking about your own personal praise life. You don't need keyboard to do that. If you have it, thank God for it. You don't need drum set to do that. If you have it at home, thank God for it. I'm talking about you personally in your time with God. The things that praise, when your praise life is in order, what you stand to enjoy. Where is it? Genesis chapter 49 verse 8. Let's start with that scripture. Please, we are going to be very, very fast. We have a lot of scriptures to read. King James Version. Let's start with King James Version. King James Version. You, Judah... Your brothers, okay, Judah, thou at whom thy brothers, your, your, thy brethren shall praise. Now, what is Judah? The meaning of Judah is praise. Anywhere you see Judah in the Bible, it means praise. Now, the scripture is not saying Judah, thou at whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thy enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before you. Number one, hear me. Hear me? If you are a praiseful person, God will make you praised among your brethren. God exalts anyone that knows how to exalt him. You know, that was what he was saying when he was talking about Eli's family. He said, whoever honors me, I, God, will honor. But anyone that de devalues me, I, God, will devalue. The first thing you stand to enjoy if you live a life of praise is that you listen, your God will continue to do in your life what will make you a praise among your brethren. I'm telling you one of my strategies. I can't do without praising God. Right from day one of my being in ministry, at times I will turn my chest to my drum set. Oh, serving a living God, I am serving a living God, amen. Oh, serving a living Father, oh, I am serving a living God, amen. That was the song I received after being born again. Ah, he can testify to it. I've been singing that song for the past 30 years. I'm not serving a dead God. And because I keep praising him as a living God, hear me, when I was struggling, he changed my level. When we needed a child, we were desperate. We didn't have a child in our, in our house. First three years of our marriage, he has blessed us with children. There was a time we were trekking all over the place to preach the gospel. He has blessed us with cars. And that song has not changed. I am serving a living God. I am serving a living God. He said, Judah, your brethren will praise you. Can I tell you the truth? There are 1,001 reasons why you should not praise God. The devil will continue to show you. 
But make a deliberate decision that you will live in praise. Because if you look at the life of Jehoshaphat, after they had fasted and prayed, God only promised them, don't worry, I promise you, you know the promise I've given you, you won't need to fight in this battle, you will conquer these enemies. And after I pray and fast, did we not get prophecy like they got prophecy? Nobody told Joseph and he sat down and said, wait, let me give God what he likes. He organized the choir and put them in front. And they began to sing. The first thing, don't forget, if you are a praiseful person, God will make you praised among your brethren. Because Judah always attracts Judah. Hallelujah. Judah always attract Judah. The story of Paul and Silas that I was telling you in Acts 16. The Bible says even in prison, they were praising, they were dancing, they were praising, they were dancing. I believe maybe God decided to dance with them. Then the, the prison began to shake. There was a quake. The Bible says all the chains in their hands fell off. As the chains fell off, all the prison gates got open. And everybody started looking. The jailer woke up, took knife, wanted to kill himself. Ah, this prisoner has, has escaped. Paul said, we have not gone. We are here. Magic, don't let the devil take praise from your mouth. Magic, is a tiny cook by in your long or anywhere. No matter what. And don't forget this quote I, I, I told you. Listen, I said, learn to be praiseful to God. Both for the things you understand and for the things you do not understand. Learn to be praiseful. Even if you don't understand, thank God for it. Number two, I'm rushing because of time. That's in Genesis 49. Show me verse 10. Show me verse 10. Shagada basendele. When God was looking for the head, where will Jesus come from? Where will I bring the head from? Look at what he said. The scepter shall not depart from where? From Judah, from praise. Scepter don't de depart from praise. Nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh comes. And to him shall be the obedience of the people. What's number two? Judah will always become the head. When you cultivate pro, uh, 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 praiseful attitude, the way to the top will open to you on its own. Praiseful people always get to the front line of good things. Let them put you at the back. Don't, don't, don't worry. Just stay from the back and be worshipping God. I'm not talking about singing Thanksgiving song now. For instance, you know, we are doing praise and worship now. Somebody will be saying, it's allergic to me. Da, 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 da. Ah, ah, yeah, there, okay. Ga, ga, ga. It, that is not praises. That's why choir, eh? learn to write your songs down. Vet it by yourself before you come to sing. It may be melodious. Make us to dance, but it may not praise God. It's right here. I went for a program yesterday. I had one special number. I had to record it. I, I want to give the choir after the service. That song says, you are who you are. You are who we call you. We are what we call you. There's no, no, no. I, I, I recorded it. That song blessed me. When you know how to praise God, hear me. God will put you in the front line. When it comes to the to good things, somebody asked Bishop Oedeko a question. Sir, what is your secret? <laughs> he said, I dance both before God physically and I dance before God privately. That you can't find a praise, a praise verse at the back. God will make way for them. Imagine God wanted to dance with Paul and Silas when they were singing. Prison doors broke loose. When God decides to dance to your praise, your condition will break loose. Then you see yourself coming out. In fact, can I tell you this truth? That has been the secret of my wife. I was praying about ISC. I have not told her. I was praying about ISC and God said I should tell her to go back to that style. That has been, because every, everywhere, MP3, not, you know, me, I don't know how to use those things to praise God. She knows how to use my own and my chest because I was a local man. And right from my being born again, I love to pray alone. So, in my closet, I'll just be forming songs. I didn't know that God was enjoying it. And I see that my life was changed. Your life will change. 
for good in the name of Jesus. Let's take number three. We don't have all the time. The third thing that happens to prisoners, Exodus 35, 30 to 35. Exodus 35, 30 to 35. Praiseful vessels always gain access to the realm where they are given divine ideas. I come again. Praiseful vessels always gain access to the realm where they are given divine ideas. Now look at this scripture. And Moses said to the, to the children of Israel, See the Lord has called by name, who? Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hor, of where? Of the tribe of where? Praise. Now when God now called him from the tribe of praise, what did God do to him? 31. And he has filled him with what? The spirit of God. In wisdom and understanding, in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship. All manner of workmanship. 32. We stop at 35. To design artistic works. To work in gold and silver and in bronze. 33. 33. 33. In cutting jewels for setting. In carving woods. And to work in all manner of artistic workmanship. Can you see? Next verse. Next verse. Be fast. And he has put in his heart the ability to teach. Not only to know in him. And Ahiloab, the son of Ahimatek, and he moved on like that. Now, but look at the wisdom that Bezalel got. Praiseful people, because they attract God's attention, they have access to divine ideas. So, before people begin to know what you know how to do, you, you'll have gotten another idea that will take you ahead of them. That's why I was so happy when one of us, one of the youngest practicing female uh, uh, engineer in Nigeria, one of us won the award in this church. Another one of us won the youngest, uh, what's that one, uh, uh, Brother Sayo won? The, uh, I mean, the, the best, uh, best what? Best hair stylist in your state. Best hair stylist in all your state. That's man seated here. In a mixed, ideas will continue to come. He won the award. When he called my wife on phone and told her, I won the award. Mama, I won the award. I said, it will come. That's why before others know what you are doing, you will have gone ahead again. What is the secret? Continue to worship God. I know why God gives you a small stature. Eh? So that you will not think yeah, you are the one. So when people see you, they will watch you. Before they will now call you back. If you have big stash, you thank God for yourself. There's a scripture for you too. <laughs> but what am I saying? Gateway to divine ideas is worship. When you are a praiseful person, you always attract his presence and you have access to divine ideas. Let's go to number four. Are you there? Joshua chapter 15, verse 12. Joshua 15, 12. Judah never lacks inheritance. Which means, people who cultivate the attitude, attitude of praise to God never lacks. They always have good things to show. Joshua 15, 12. The west border was the coastline of the great sea. This is the boundary line of the children of who? Of Judah. All round, according to their families. Can you see? Praiseful people don't lack. And when you're talking about Molon, when you're talking about Ogun Koto, Molon, you're talking about Mokono, you're talking about Toba, you're talking about praise life, where to confirm more of this, when they brought the Ark of Covenant to the house of Obededum, everybody expected Obededum to die. Because the Ark of Covenant just killed a man called Uza. But I took time to go and research who was Obededum. Why did the ark prosper him? I discovered that from the Bible, Obedido was one of the trumpeters. He was a priest, but his own assignment was to blow trumpet before the ark. So when they now brought the ark to his house, he needed not to go to church to blow trumpet again. So every morning, he will pick the, the trumpet. Hmm. <coughs> da -da -da -da. 
Ta da 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 da. Ta da 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 da. Ta da 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 da. Ta 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 da 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 da. Da 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 da. When the Bible said within three months, there was news in the city. God has blessed Obedidom. God has blessed Obedidom. God has blessed. Ah, I. David said, "We are going back to carry the ark." Ah, we thought the only thing the ark knew how to do was to kill. We are going back to bring the ark. Why? Because. Obedidum was an instrumentalist. You know, one thing I always regret about life is that I had opportunity to learn how to play keyboard 20 years ago. I paid somebody to come and be training me. But when we got to turning supper, I said, I don't have time for all this rubbish. Put my hand on the keyboard. And today, anytime I'm worshipping God on my, on my own, I always feel it that I wish because I would have been able to play and feel it. If you are instrument, if you are an instrumentalist, you are not supposed to be poor. Can I tell you? If you are an instrumentalist, you are not supposed to be poor. If you are an instrumentalist, you are still struggling. You are playing for others. You are not playing to worship God on your own. Judah don't use to lack. Are we said? Can I go on? Number what? Number five. In Deuteronomy 33 7, Judah will always attract divine attention. Judah will always attract divine attention. Judah will always attract the God must listen. And this he said of Judah. Hear, Lord, the voice of Judah. Don't forget, Judah means praise. Hear, Lord, the voice of praise. And bring him to his people. Let his hands be sufficient for him. And may you be a help against his enemy. Can you see that if you are a praiser, you will always carry around... What? Divine presence. Your voice will always attract divine attention. Because if you go to Revelation, you will see that where God lives in heaven, he surrounds himself with praise. If you now find praise in your own life, he will tabernacle with you. Let's move further. Number six. Judges chapter one, verse two. Judah never loses any battle. There is no how you will lose any battle you approach praisefully. Please help me echo that one. Those of you that always speak quotes. There is no how you will lose any battle you approach praisefully. And the Lord said, Judah shall go up. Indeed, I have delivered the land where? Into his hands. So permit me to tell you, anytime there is a serious battle in front of you, Praise God for it. Do what? Praise God for it. Turn that battle to song. You know, say, Lord, to According to what she said, you give me a little carry you. Approach every battle with praise. You remember that? Okay, there's no time for that. If I should start telling you that story, we won't leave here today. Number seven. Listen, in Judah. 
God reveals himself. Psalm 76 verse 1. In Judah, God reveals himself. Psalm 76. Show me verse 1. In Judah, God is known. In praise, you know God. I am serving. This is a praise song. A living God. His name is Jesus Christ. I say he died and rose and gave me victory. I have the victory. I say Jesus who died and rose and gave me victory. I am the victory. Ah, Lord Jesus, you that died and rose, you gave me victory. What is house rent? Ah, what is house rent? How much is house rent compared to death? Ah, Lord, I thank you for victory over this. Most, listen, that's why, don't joke with your praise life. It is in praise that God reveals himself. That's why the moment the Hosaphat choir started singing and dancing and praising the Lord, God decided to say, yes, now let me show them that I'm here. Let me reveal myself. The Bible says the enemies of Jehoshaphat began to fight themselves. Beloved, stop complaining. You have prayed, you have fasted. Stop talking about the problem again. Start talking about the might of our God. I serve a living God, oh, even the devil know, say, nah, true, oh. This is a praise song. Ah, I don't know when I'm creating a problem for the person that will leave praise for second service now. <laughs> ah, most of your songs have been nullified. I serve a living God, oh, everybody know. Say, na in the rain, oh. Jehovah, na you the rain, oh. These are praise. Wherever God sees genuine praise, what will he do? He reveals himself. I don't say. He shows us that God reveals deep things about himself to people who yield themselves to the praise of our God. I went to preach on radio last week. You know, I'm still going again today. I've never been to that channel before. I was only invited. And they said I should speak about the voice of God. And sincerely speaking, when I got born again, look up, my pastor taught us about how to hear God. So he now told us, go and explore. Which means, every one of you, go and make research. Do you know that? Look up, I made research. Hmm? I started to hear God. You know what now puts me in trouble? God now began to show me the secret sin of our pastor. And our pastor said, anything that God shows you, write it down. I didn't know. I've written them down. I didn't know that after one service, our pastor went to check my morning devotion book and saw it. He now went to report me to the senior pastor. I'm trying to code it because, you know, we're online. The senior pastor now called me. Prince, I said, sir, where did you get all these things? I said, God told me, sir. You are the one that taught us how to hear God. This is what God told me, sir. It caused fight, too. Serious fight between me and the other pastor. My pastor now called me secretly. He said, Prince, I said, sir. He said, I know God told me. But you shouldn't have written it down for me to see. So, last week I was now speaking about the voice of God. A senior minister, I didn't know, in Nigeria, listened to the program. And it was the same that night. That night, I was sleeping. I slept early. As we got home, I hit the bed. Around 11 p.m., my phone rang. They said, sir, reverend, so-so-and-so wants to speak with you. 
I don't have his number. He said we should give you his number. So they gave me, they sent the number. I called him. Good morning, sir. Uh, good evening. Uh, uh, Abi, which one? You know, Yoruba has several greetings. Ekale. What is Ekale in, uh, in the English? Eh? Good evening. Ekro Lenko. <laughs> because in English, we say good night. It means we are going to bed. We can't see again until tomorrow. Okay, say I can say good day. Okay. So I greeted him. The man said, where are you? I said, I'm in Ibadan. How can you know God this much and I don't know you? You spoke so accurately about the voice of God. And I told the host of that radio program, how can somebody know the voice of God this much and I don't know him? Do you know what? I need to see you tomorrow. I'm giving you an, an appointment. Okay. I, <laughs> as we dropped the food, I agreed. The rest is story. Now, but what am I saying? Because of the way I worship God, and sincerely, I had this encounter when I gave my life to Christ. And what was the encounter I had? I had the encounter that from the book of uh, Hebrews 11, when you get to go and read it, some people believe God for several things that they did not receive till they died. Still, they didn't stop worshiping God. Listen, I got, I got that in Hebrew. When you get to uh, 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 oh, go and read Hebrews 11, I now decided for my young good, uh, young age as a Christian, that I won't allow my praise of God to be determined by what I have or do not have. So I was always cheerful. So God always reveals secrets to me. If you want God to reveal things to you, take your worship, your praise life, personal one, take it serious. Not the makeup one, you just make up, ah, I'm, to, I'm supposed to leave praises today. You know, sir, you know, some of you have become um, 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 just like one, so, something that uh, Reverend Billy Akoni said, you have become uh, so used to leading praise that you can lead praise without praying or preparing. Reverend Billy Akoni told us about, he said he went to preach in a, he went to a village. So he now said, let's look for a church to worship. The Anglican church. He said the pastor of the Anglican church so much understand everything about the service to the point that he could do the service without looking at any book. He knows the hymns of Ant. He knows all the scriptures of Ant. He knows everything of Ant. So he came to service on Sunday morning drunk. Yet he conducted the service without one mistake. Reverend Billy Akoni said he was there. The man was drunk. He said they went to call him from Palm Wine Shop. And as he called him, uh, Alaga, he said, service time. He wore his castle. The man already asked you, asked you, service, asked you, service. Only no way. Who they quote here? Who they la? A moment man la. He said, and they conducted the service to the end and closed. He said, God now spoke to him. He said, that's how some Christians are. The spirit of God have left. But they are so organized. <laughs> That they know what is next. <laughs> In his drunkenness, he didn't make a mistake. Something has been doing for several years. Don't get to that point. Though. That's why I always tell God, I don't want to be a professional preacher. The professional preacher knows the system, but does not have a relationship with God. Let's close with this one. What can you do to cultivate a praiseful habit? What can you do to cultivate a praiseful habit? What can you do? I only tell you one in this service. Decide to study the act of God in His Word. Prino, eh? Latima Shawari, Abisha Shasharu, Luri Awan, 
uh, act of God in his world. Yes. Sir? Is she alone? Read about the miracles. Read about the, the things he said, how it was challenged, and how he brought it to pass. He brought it to pass. You know, when you read about the study, I wrote here, I wrote here, I'm closing with this. I'm closing with this. Study to discover how mighty he is. Your understanding of his might is what triggers the urge to praise him. You know, I read the Bible one day. When Jesus got to the house of Mary and Martha, I was now wondering, why did Jesus weep? You know, Jesus wept. Why did he weep? I was just studying. Jesus, why did you weep? He didn't weep because Lazarus was dead. He wept because those who have worked with him for three years did not know him. You know, when Mary came, Master, if you had come, my brother wouldn't have died. When Martha came, Master, if you had come, my brother wouldn't have died. When he was talking with them, they said, if he had loved them so much, he wouldn't have allowed this to happen. He looked at his disciples. He looked at everybody. Why is it? I, you have me in your mix, and you still didn't understand me. The Bible says he wept. He stood up, and he said, where did you lay him? Most of us serve the God we are not ready to search to know of. He said, only those that seek me, find me. So the more of God you study, and listen, you don't study God by looking at monkeys and apples and all. You study God in his word. Give more time to Bible study. Your praise life will grow. It's true. Give more time to Bible study. Somebody sang a song and he said, open your Bible to the book of Psalms. He brought out the song. Oh Lord, how great thou art. I can't remember the rest again. Da, 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 da. And he sang the book of Psalms. Oh, thou hast done wonderful things, yes. Thy counsel of old, a faithfulness and truth. Sir, ma, if we all study the Bible, we will discover God. When we discover God, we will praise Him. When we praise Him, He will come down to our situation. God is never ashamed to come down to where you are. He was not ashamed to, to meet Paul and Silas in prison. And can I tell you this truth? When God comes down to where you are, ah, uh, ah, uh, that devil will know that you have God. That's why any single time, every single time I'm washing, I'm doing anything, I'm free. I've cultivated that in my spirit. I sing songs of praise. Have you learned something today? In the second service, we are going to talk about the four strategies. I mean, it's not strategy. Yeah, four strategy of the devil to kill your praise life. Now be on your feet. I'm through with preaching this morning. This service, are you blessed? Are you blessed? Stand up now. Have you no one go? Another service is starting. Turn up. Ah, sorry. Which one is correct? This one. Now, imagine if every one of us, our praise life is intact. Look at the, the presence of God we will command. Father, we thank you again this morning. We give you all the glory for your word that has come forth to us. Help us, O God, that we shall be doers of this word, not hearers only in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for encounters that will boost our praise life. Thank you, Father. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Now I want to bless you for the